every year when I make these videos and I'm covering the deep roster, it's definitely a passion of mine. I love covering these guys that are fighting for their lives for NFL careers that are hopeful that they could make the back end of a 53-man roster or at minimum keep the dream alive and be on a practice squad. And look, I get pumped up about it. But I'll admit, I'll say outright, it's difficult, man. It is very difficult if you were an undrafted free agent walking into an NFL building to catch on. Now, we've seen offensive linemen do it here in Philadelphia, and even last year we had a great feel-good story and Reed Blankenship catch on. But I will admit, I mean, it's difficult to, you know, to do that, right? And even myself, I had to go back and take a look at, well, how many wide receivers, like during my time frame, like my time of watching football, how many of these dudes have honestly caught on to a roster? And like, and we're pretty decent, like we're really good football players. And I kind of came up with a little list here to start today's video with. Going all the way back to Adam Thielen, which we heard Coach Sirianni talk about Adam Thielen and, and say some very positive things and say like, that's why you evaluate these guys. You, you don't want to be the dummy who misses out on an Adam Thielen, right? Talking about Wes Welker, formerly of the Patriots. Cole Beasley. How about Rod Smith, two-time Super Bowl winning wide receiver for the Denver Broncos? Doug Baldwin, longtime Seattle Seahawks guy. Really good route runner, by the way. Danny Amendola. The New York Giants and old Victor Cruz. To David Patton, the late David Patton, unfortunately. To Miles Austin of one of our competitors here in you know, Dallas Cowboys and Miles Austin. Also caught on with the Eagles for like a year or so, if, I don't, if I'm not mistaken. And then last but not least, how many of you guys from the 1990s are going to remember this name? Think back to the New York Jets and Wayne Sherbet. Yeah, Wayne Sherbet, New York Jets. He was an interesting one where he caught on to a roster for a long time and had a very productive NFL career. So undrafted free agents absolutely make it at the wide receiver position and can absolutely be productive. I mean, there's a few names in there like Rod Smith and, you know, Wayne Sherbet and, you know, Doug Baldwin, even Miles Austin, I hate to say it, but he had a few years where he was really, really good. I mean, there's definitely some names on this list, Adam Thielen and some guys who made impact. So today's topic is, Look, it's a continuation of where we already started. You know, we talked about Joseph Ngata. We talked about Jaden Hazelwood. Well, we're going to continue by talking about University of Miami and formerly Oklahoma wide receiver Charleston Rambo. All right, guys, let's get it. What's up, Cerebral Football fans? My name is Stephen Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. So Charleston Rambo is an interesting guy because what we are talking about here is a not only like an undrafted free agent, but we're also talking about a sub-180 pound wide receiver. And if you guys remember when Devontae Smith was drafted, if you guys remember that ridiculous, you know, storyline there, which was, hey man, when you take a sub-180 pound wide receiver in the top 10, you know, think think Ted Ginn Jr. and, and those dudes, it, it's it's a little tricky. Uh, Devontae Smith has been a dream come true, man. I mean, that was one of the best picks that we've made in the past, you know, 10 15, 20 years, to be quite honest, <laughs> for the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, he's up there. He's pretty high on that list of guys that we've drafted. So I'll say this. You look at Charleston Rambo. I can tell you right now, if you go dig into scouting reports, you're going to see that concern of a sub-180 pound wide receiver. But look, I mean, he's got a similar frame to Devontae Smith. He's just not as twitchy as Devontae Smith. With that said, he's a six foot one, 177 pound, 32 inch arm reach. So he's got longer arms, longer limbs, if you will. 76 and a half inch wingspan, which I will say is a little different from Devontae. Devontae is kind of like lanky, to be quite honest. Like Devontae's like just under 32 inches in the arm reach and has like a 78 and a half inch wingspan. Like Devontae's got like this weird lanky body frame to him, to be quite honest. Charleston Rambo has more of what you would expect from a, a field side flanker receiver. Nine and, and three quarter inch hands, 9.75 inch hand size. So, I mean, yeah, he's sub-180 pounds, but the rest of his measurements kind of check out and make you feel like standard, typical NFL wide receiver, if you will. Testing. This is where I think things get very, very interesting. So there's a uh, former VP. Well, no, he's the current VP of football operations, actually, for the San Francisco 49ers. And uh, he's kind of put out there a few times about how the 49ers judge your flying 20. And I think this is really important when you're looking at people that you're considering to be vertical threats. Now, I will tell you this. Some of the guys who have the most impressive flying 20s at the wide receiver position from any NFL combine, eh, not the greatest. I, I mean, there, it's definitely some more subtlety to it than just the flying 20 number, to be quite honest. But that is a theory that's out there. And you go look at the VP of the 49ers. It's a young name, young man by the name of Parag. 
I, he he kind of explains why the 49ers value that flying 20 number. And when you get to Charleston Rambo, you do get a very distinct story when you look at his testing data. So he has a 4, 5, 7, 40. You guys know I keep telling you that full 40s are useful, but not as useful as people think. And this is a really good example of that, right? Not every 4, 5, 4, 5, 7, 4, 6, 4, 3, or 4, 4, or 4, 4, 5 is equal. They, they can tell you completely different stories about the player. In this case, you got a guy in Charleston Rambo who is a very quick starter. He's got a 1, 5, 3, 10 split, which is quite good to be quite honest about it, right? Following that 1, 5, 3, 10 split, he has like a 2, 5, 7, 20 split, which is pretty good. I mean, he's, he's staying in phase. He's doing his thing. He's, 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 he's got decent, you know, kind of off the line of scrimmage type release type data. However, when you get to the flying 20, and the theory behind the flying 20 is, is that the better your flying 20 is, the, the more likely you'd be able to basically create separation above 20 yards, if you will. His flying 20 is exactly two seconds if you ran a two, five, seven, 20 yard split because it's the back 20, right? So you're just going, okay, it was a four, five, seven minus two, five, seven. You got two seconds, right? Now of the three undrafted players, I will say that, you know, the guy that probably will shock you because if you went and looked at his actual 40 time, you'd be like, I wouldn't have expected that. But Joseph Ngata, while he may have ran almost a four, six, 40, He's got a 188 flying 20, which is actually quite good, especially for due to his size, to be quite honest. And then you get to Charleston Rambo with his two second even flying 20. And then behind him, you have Jaden Hazelwood's 2.01 second flying 20. Now, I will say different guys, different alignments, even though all three of them could probably bounce and move around the formation, I don't think there's anything to, to stop them from doing that. I will say that naturally, you know, you go to Joseph Angata, that's a, that's a boundary side X aligned wide receiver. You can play all three, but that's that's the natural alignment for him. Jaden Hazelwood, to me, it's a little bit more like the guy that he replaced at Arkansas. He's kind of like Traylon Burks. He's a taller slot receiver. Taller, physical, yak, you know, kind of slot receiving type player. A dude that, in my opinion, you do need to design a little offense for to, to fully capitalize upon what he is. And then you get to a guy like Charleston Rambo, who to me is just kind of a natural, uh, what I would call field side flanker aligned wide receiver. So think about, I know like guys don't get confused on Madden because Madden gets the buttons wrong. They're just going off of their buttons, not going off of the actual alignments they put on the football field. But an X is your boundary. Your Z is the flanker and that's the outside receiver. And then a Y is normally referenced to either a wide tight end or a slot wide receiver in NFL playbooks. So when I look at these guys, it's like I said before, guys, some of this has to come down to special teams production. And I think that's where Charleston Rambo might be able to stick things through. This young man is an experienced kick returner. He has experience as a kick returner in quite a bit of it, to be honest with you. Beyond kick returning, he has fielded a few punts and maybe he can get his way into the mix as a punt returner. I don't know. You know, to be quite honest, it's, it's difficult to project, to be quite honest, but he has done it a, a couple of times. And outside of that, guys, he's been a part of the punt return unit without being the punt returner itself. And he's also been part of the kick coverage unit. So I will say that Charleston Rambo has a little bit more prowess as a special teams player, although I can't sit here and tell you honestly if, if that's like, like oh, like he's really, really good at it. I don't, I don't know, guys. I, I'm going to sit here and tell you that I've sitting here and watched every snap this guy's taken on the special teams unit. Like, not enough time for that right now, to, to be quite honest, to, to even go over that. But what I will say is, is that this young man has familiarity with their quarterback. You know, while his vertical numbers weren't that impressive at Oklahoma, he had a really well-graded, you know, kind of vertical concept to him when Jalen Hurts was there, and then it fell on its face in 2020. He was never the dude above 20 yards for them. C.D. Lamb was in 2019. In 2020, it was Mims. But when he got to Miami in 2021... He kind of broke through, guys. He had 27 targets over 20 yards. That's the pretty high, man. I mean, he was like 22nd, tied for 22nd overall in terms of targets above 20 yards. So he broke into the top 50, more specifically inside the top 25. So, I mean, there is some reason to suspect that this guy could potentially provide you with spacing on the field, and that may be what they're looking at. He can play some special teams, is a taller guy, good arm reach, you know, might be able to give you some vertical concept here. Yes, his flying 20 number is not the greatest. It's a little bit to be concerned about, but we can always go off the fact to say that, hey, man, track numbers are track numbers, and your actual field speed your field speed. You may not test well as a track athlete, but you might have really good field speed. 
So we'll have to see what happens when he actually gets onto a football field. That's just kind of what I'll end it with, all right? All right, guys, I appreciate y'all's time and attention. Let me know what you think about Charleston Rambo. I know a lot of you guys are fans of him. I've seen the comments roll in. I've seen quite a few of you ask me to make this video. Here it is, man. This, this is what I know about this young man. This is what I know about him as a prospect. All right, guys, I appreciate y'all, and I'll see y'all on the next video.